what we're going to do now is it's time to install the oil collector. The oil collector screws are very similar. The oil collector screws are very similar to the screws for the bearing retainer. Okay, they look so much alike. However, if you'll notice, they're different threads. All right, you go trying to put them in the other hole and you're going to damage the threads. So, we don't want to do that. We're going to seal up the holes for the oil collector. A little bit of sealant around the head will do. Try to stay away from RTV. RTV has a tendency to go everywhere it wants to go except where you want it to go. So stay away from RTV if you can help it. Don't forget to come back and torque these. You've got your oil collector bolts tightened and torqued. Now we're ready to move on to installing your bearing retainer. Okay, your bearing retainer is going to fit right here. And it should. be able to rotate everything nicely. But you got to make sure to hold the bearing in at the back. If it falls out, everything falls out and everything's in the floor. And you got to start over again. Alright, so we got a free turning assembly. Alright, we're going to install the bearing retainer. I like to use Forma Gasket sealant for most everything. Occasionally I'll use things that use a slag, but mostly I like to coat my gaskets with Forma Gasket. I have never, ever, ever had Forma Gasket fail on me. That's why I like to use it. And I don't really care what brand it is, um, whether it be Napa brand, uh, O'Reilly's brand, um, Permatex brand. I really don't care. I just like the Forma Gasket sealant. It works really nice with anything I've ever wanted to put on. Okay, we've installed the gasket with the Forma Gasket on it. Now we're ready to install the bearing retainer. Don't do like I just did and not line up the holes properly prior to sliding it in. You can't slide it once you put it on because the gasket will move with it. There we go. Just got all of them started. By the way, this is a 732nd Allen these are going on with. Make sure when you tighten these that you tighten them evenly. Just lightly snug them up. Get them in line. Even though you've chased the threads, there will be times when you're going to find this one is very tight. The third one, and the reason being, it has a tendency to want to push up against the snap ring. Once you get those in place, you're going to want to torque them. Now remember, I put this on without this seal. And the reason I put it on without that seal was because I have a sealed bearing and I sealed the shaft or the drain back. Okay, with all that sealed, nothing's coming out the front. 
if you want to try to rotate this now, you can, but if you try rotating it much without holding this bearing in, it's going to want to push the bearing out of the back, which can cause everything to fall out and cause you a lot of grief. So you don't want to do that um, unless you're holding that bearing. If you hold on to the bearing, hey, you can spin it all day long. Everything's going to free, spin free and clear. All that's good. We got one thing left to do to make this final. Okay, once that's down all the way, get your bearing retainer in behind it, make sure everything's still tight and flush, like so. Now it's time to drive those in the rest of the way. We want them fully firm up against the case. Okay. This is now a rebuilt T90 transmission that was rebuilt using two totally different techniques that I haven't seen used before. So um, I'm pretty pleased with it, how it come out. I hope you are too. And uh, let me know what you think. I'm always open to improvements and suggestions. If we need to do things to modify the rebuild process, so be it. Just let me know. Thanks. Once I've rebuilt the transmission and I'm not ready to install it on the Jeep yet, I will wrap a coat hanger through this eyelet, bring it down, wrap it around the shaft, and back down and through this eyelet so that the gear assembly can't fall out. Last thing you want to do is go pick it up and have that rear end fall out. Wire it up if you're not going to install it yet. Uh, if you're ready to go ahead and put the transfer case on it, then by all means do so. If you're not ready to put a transfer case on it yet, go ahead and wire it up so that it can't move. Remember that I told you earlier that once we assembled the transmission, got it all put together, we were going to shift it into second gear and then remove the shift tower to see how close the clutch sleeve is to the second gear. See if we need to shim it or not. So that's what we're going to do with this one. Okay? There's second gear.